Afternoon guys and girls and ladies and gents. Uh, thanks for joining us for this Optron U Spatial Technology webinar for today. Uh, specifically looking at UAV data processing in TBC. Um, between myself and Gustav will take you through the webinar today. And thanks for making the time to join this webinar today. Um, I'll start off just uh, into the introductions, obviously myself, Albert Willifier, Optron Geospatial Segment Manager, uh, looking at all the geospatial products uh, here at, at Optron that we sell to our clients. And then with me today is Gustav Fick, uh, Segment uh, Subject Matter Expert, uh, a bit of everything at the moment, 3D scanning as well as helping out on the UAV side. Um, he'll be taking you through the TBC side of things, uh, just showing you what we can do and the benefits of using TBC for processing your data and what can be done afterwards. Uh, we'll have a Q&A session afterwards, so any questions uh, while we're going on, you guys can always use the, the comment box or you know, just uh, raise your hand and we can ask, uh, get back to you and, and get uh, into your questions or you can wait till the end. Uh, I'll share some details just on Optron help, uh, help Desk, just so you guys might be aware of that. And then just share all the links where you can follow us and see what we are up to and, and what's up and coming in Optron's world. Okay, let's start off. Trimble Business Center, uh, your central data software hub for server and construction professionals. So Trimble has invested quite a lot of time and effort into Trimble Business Center to get it to where it is at this stage. Uh, latest release was just a few weeks ago. Uh, TBC 5.5 was released. And I'll just take you through a few of the highlights and a few of the important things that I think is necessary to mention about what TBC can do and how it can benefit having it as your, your central piece of software that any kind of data can be brought in. So what I mean with that is that TBC can manage data from obviously all the Trimble products, um, but third party uh, products is also not a problem for Trimble Business Center to handle, as well as taking your data or bringing in data from third-party software as well. Autodesk, Bentley, um, those kind of software packages uh, is also being integrated so that it makes it easy for guys to move data between those kind of software packages without losing the integrity of the data and having to do some rework when you shift data between those software packages. Um, up until now with TBC 5.5, some of the enhancements that's been made recently with that, uh, as I said, uh, CAD deliverables being much faster and, and productivity for point cloud workflows, uh, how to in, enhance your, your workflow in CAD deliverables, how to make life easier um, by extracting or to extracting a linear feature uh, using uh, overhead power lines, curb and gutter extractions, um, so that you basically just define where you want it to be extracted and TBC will automate that extraction process for you. I do have one or two little videos that I'll try at the end just to show you guys to give an example of how that works. So you, if that is something you're interested in, please um, hang on till the end. I'll show you one or two small little videos. Hopefully it doesn't buffer too much just to give an idea of how that auto extraction works. Uh, second thing also, it's uh, assigning feature definitions and attributes with ease uh, in using measure code mode uh, so that you can actually, as you would do measure codes in the field, where you can actually select the different measure code when you're doing actual point measurement in the field, they want that same workflow to be done in TBC where if you have point cloud data set, you will actually have your little menu of measure codes and where you click, you choose that specific code to say a tree or a manhole or a fire hydrant or whatever the case may be and to digitize your data quite easily using measure codes in TBC to create CAD points. Uh, expanded capabilities for vertical applications, so uh, for those guys in the mining industry um, and, and, and construction where monitoring is important, so the functionality of that uh, with the T4D control and platform has been enhanced, so TBC is much quicker to get that kind of data into your TBC software at the moment with a monitoring module that they've been added on now. Uh, looking at tunnels, um, not only tunnels, TBC is definitely and Trimble is definitely moving into more of the underground working, so not only for a tunnel for a road or a, or a railway, but also looking at mining and enhancing that uh, where your design can be done in 3D and then using 
uh, scanners and, and terrestrial scanners and, and, and handheld scanners and stuff like the SX-12, uh, X-7 uh, to then capture the data and then be able to compare your design to your as-built uh, and also for, for progress of, of the work where as-built to as-built comparisons can be done so that guys can get accurate uh, on-time uh, information about what the progress is there. Uh, it spits out the report that shows you the uh, undercut overburden kind of uh, information that you can get, volume calculations and so forth. So that is something that they're working on. And then of course uh, TBC is definitely enhancing their functionality in the processing of UAV data and recently the DJI Phantom 4 RTK has been one of those as well as the M300P1 at the moment you can import uh, or you can open up directly into TBC and be able to process those data sets um, in your TBC software package. Uh, reduce barrier to entry with subscription options. So Trimble is also moving into that realm of, of the uh, software where you can actually now buy your subscription for a year to TBC. That gives you the flexibility, obviously, of the amount of licenses. Um, you will always have the latest version of the software available, so there's no software maintenance that needs to be purchased. And then there's a flexible way of looking at what your functionality is that you require and buy a subscription according to that. Obviously, the nice thing about that is it's an online signing that you need to do, so they link that up to your Trimble ID. And once you open up TBC, doesn't matter on which PC it is, you sign in with your Trimble ID and it will automatically pick up your license. And off you go, you will then be able to work with Trimble Business Center, doesn't matter where you are. Um, and as we said, the flexibility to mix, mix and match, not mix, sorry about that, uh, the offerings and you can add easily to your offering to do certain work for just a certain amount of time and then move along uh, as well as that. So there's uh, definitely some, some good scope in the subscription side of TBC for those interested in that platform. Just some interesting new additions to, to TBC with the 5.5 version and, and what, what enhancements has been made. Uh, as you can see, IFCs and the TRB file format, that's for, for Trimble BIM or Trim BIM, um, that you can now obviously manipulate and view and use in TBC. That obviously helps a lot with guys that's in, in, in the construction and plant environment where IFCs are what they require to do 3D modeling and they're building those models according to that. That can now be imported into TBC and exported uh, for the guys to utilize those kind of uh, 3D modeling objects uh, in the software and take it out to third party software where they want to utilize that. Point clouds again, uh, just as an example of a, of a tunnel underground extracting cross-section information from that so easy to just select the center line choose your intervals and it will then create cross-sections for you in your scan data um, that you can utilize uh, as i said the extraction part of it the the defined complex profiles for curb and gutters so obviously if it's just a normal single road that you have on the left and right hand side there's a curb and gutter they've enhanced it now to actually be able to do something like the, the example there with the middleman that you can see and you can actually move your stuff uh, over the middleman to the other side and it will still be able to auto extract the information for you um, out of that information data set or the point cloud that you have. Albert? Yes. Sorry, I see we have a raised hand uh, from Naif. Yes, go ahead Naif. Would you like to make a comment or anything that you would like to know? Just unmute yourself if you want to ask a question. Okay, he's removed his hand. Okay. That might have been a by by accident hand. Not a problem. Um, and still on the auto extraction, uh, even power lines is now ought to be being able to be auto extracted, as you can see in the little example there. Um, they've enhanced it. Previously, it was just one continuity at a time or one line at a time. As you can see now, they've actually made it so that you can have multiple selections of of the of, of the power line there. And that will then auto extract those lines for you between the two uh, defined points. As you can see, the little purple and gray crosses that you see, it will auto extract the line for you uh, in between those two setups. So that's easy work to now not having to be to self 
to click on it yourself, TBC will auto extract those, those lines for you and create CAD for them. And then uh, enhancement that a lot of us has been asking for and a lot of clients has asked for over, over the past few years is that TBC can now import ECW aerial imagery files um, that can now be imported and be utilized in TBC for, for photogrammetry uses um, such as for the guys that have I know a lot of the, the aerial survey companies is the, the standard format they, they bring the aerial tiles out in is ECW so TBC is now able to import those files for you to be utilized. Albert yeah. we have another raised hand sorry yeah, yeah. Obiti this time. Sure just unmute yourself if you have a question or just type it in the comment section. Can you hear me? Yes can hear you. Okay, my question is regarding the the power lines. After extracting the for the five, let's say they have five power lines of power lines. In what format can you get them out to? Uh, so depending for, on for what analysis. Uh, depends on what format you would like. So if it's just in a CAD format, the the, the normal D, DW, uh, DWGs, DGNs, uh, DXF formats exist. Um, you can take it to shapefile format. Um, it depends on where you want to go with it. If you have a specific software or a specific file type, uh, just let me know and I can, I can let you know if that's possible to, to export it to that file format. Okay, thank you. Okay, not a problem. Okay, and then that's it for the update there. Oh, sorry, just before I forget, just on the processing side, um, just take note that it's just not only DJI that uh, TBC can process, so there is other platforms as well. Uh, the most notable ones that you can import data from to be processed in TBC is, as we noted, the Phantom 4 RTK and the M300 with the P1, uh, as well as the EBX with the SODA camera that can be processed as well. And then other platforms, uh, Dell Air UX11, Wingtra 1, uh, is also other platforms that can be imported into TBC and it will be able to process the data for you. Okay. That then is the updating and the information side on TBC 5.5. Gustav, over to you to run through the processing and the live demo. So no glitches, no hiccups, hopefully. Good luck with that and go for it. I'll it's, just stop sharing my side and then off to your side. Perfect. Thank you, Albert. Uh, yeah, thank you to everybody joining. Um, yeah, fingers crossed. <laughs> um, but yeah, guys, thank you for joining. Yes, I'm going to just quickly share my screen. Albert, if you can just give me a heads up um, when you can see it. Mm, there we go. There we go. Am I supposed to see TBC? Then That's we're the good one. To go. Then we, there, perfect. Then it's good to go. Awesome. Thank you, Albert. All right, guys. So yeah, um, ultimately, what I would like to show you guys today is just to get a feel for the workflow in um, processing data um, using, uh, I've got two data sets. Um, the first one is going to be, I'm going to use GCPs to process the, 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 um, the, 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 the flight missions. Um, it's Fanta, DJI Phantom 4 RTK data sets. And then also just give you guys a feel of, you know, how the workflow basically goes and then also what kind of deliverables can you then generate. My second data set will then be a PPK data set. So, um, yeah, without further ado, let's get cracking. All right. So firstly, um, when you get started in TBC, um, the important part is just to you know create your project. Um, as you can see here, I've already created two templates, so um, WG23 and uh, WG31. Uh, so you basically, when you create your project, you select what coordinate system you want to work in. If you don't, um, well, you can you can start off with metric, and there's a, it's not only a the, your last option to do that. There's other peop, um, other places to do that as well, um, which I will show you just now. But uh, ultimately, uh, sorry, let me just open up that data set again. There we go. Sorry, I accidentally. Let me just wait for it to open up. There we go. All right. So that's the data set. So. The first things first is you'll go to your photogrammetry tab. So how this basically works, you work it from the left-hand side um, to the right-hand side. So um, what you can see here is just your uh, 
you can again change your coordinate system here. So I'm using for this data set WG23 and then SA2010. And then also the important thing is when you create a project, um, save the project. Otherwise, um, it's what it's what, what it's doing. It's saving that data on your C drive. Um, the problem is just your C drive might get clogged up. So the best is to because it stores it in a temporary folder on your C drive. So first, the best thing is to do is to actually when you start create your project and then uh, and then move on. All right. The second part is then I've already imported the data, but I just wanted to, to, to show you guys how this is done. So firstly, what you'll do, you'll click on import DJI UAV data. And then what you'll do, you'll now go and you will select your, uh, your, 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 um, your missions. So under data sets, uh, DJI Phantom 4 RTK. There we go. So here you'll see there's the two flight missions. So if you select the first one, and you basically let me just move this up and you click import what it will then do it will now import the the, the project I'm not going to do this again but um, ultimately what you'll then do you'll import your first mission and then also the second mission um, and then ultimately you'll sit with this so as you can see here that's my first mission and that is my second mission so the next thing to do is just to import your GCPs. So what you will then now do, this is now, let me just open up this for you guys. So there's my G, uh, CSV file with all my G, um, uh, GCPs. So what you'll do, you'll take that and you'll import this into your project. Right, the important part is just to select cont uh, the control quality. So there you can see it's your point, your easting, your northern elevation code. So when you import this, it will be with um, uh, triangles, as you can see there. So there's my GCP is now important. Oh, imported. Sorry, my my apologies. Um, other thing that I also just wanted to show you guys that with every mission that's flown with the Phantom 4 RTK, so it creates for every mission there will be a folder with all the the the, the, the photographs in there, and then also your your um, ops files will be saved in that same folder. So if you want to do PPK processing, the ops file is already um, contained in that folder. You'll also see under my imported files, there we go, there's my ops file for both of the missions in there. Right, so because I've got two uh, missions, the next step would be to merge these two missions. So what you'll then do is to select your flight missions. You can either do this in the plan view or in your project explorer, but you'll then select it and then merge your flights. And then ultimately, as you can see there, now it's one complete mission and divided into different blocks. Okay, so that now being done, what I want to check, the next thing that I want to do is just to make sure that the positioning is, 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 is okay, um, that I'm actually working in the right system. Um, so basically what you can do, there's a toggle background map that you can make use of in TBC. So by switching that on, it will then, this is now the Trimble map view, but what you can do if you select your project, right click properties, you can then change over to a digital imagery and then basically just to get that. So yeah, I'm happy with this. So yeah, we can uh, continue, but this is just a quick check. On, on, on your data. Right, so having that done, the next step is now, um, as I've mentioned, this is, uh, we're going to process the data using our GCPs. So what you will now do is to adjust your photo stations. So you'll select that. And in this um, uh, function here, this is your relative adjustment. This is basically your tie point extraction where it will go and actually look for common points with all your different images to uh, stitch them together now. Um, but ultimately you'll first perform your relative adjustment. So when you click on adjust here, it will open up a process view. So once this has been completed, it will give you a command there uh, stating that um, the, the, the adjustment has been completed and can, you, uh, can the software now apply the adjustment. So I'm not going to um, uh, do this complete process, but this is just to show you what you can expect to see. So once this has been completed, then you can just apply the adjustment. Right. So after that has been, this has been done, 
the next step would now be to actually mark out where your GCPs are. So what you'll then do, you can either continue using absolute adjustment and then snap off all the, 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 the your ground control points or there is a little bit of a shortcut. The, 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 the other thing is just if you use the absolute adjustment, if you continue with this process here under the adjust photo stations, then afterwards you just need to go and generate your point cloud and your auto mosaic or your raster DSM for that matter. But using this function, the advanced UAS, this is basically a uh, the uh, one press button operation. So what you will then do, you'll jump straight into selecting your GCPs. And then also if you click next, you can already select all your um, your deliverables that you want to, 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 to generate. Um, so you can select that. And when you click process, it will then complete the process. So you don't have to really manually intervene to actually now select generating point clouds or, or thermosaics. So ultimately, so what the next step would be, would now be to um, select your control ID. So what you need to do, you should need to go down. So I'm just going to move this guy up there. Right, so what you first do, you select your first point. I just want to close my process view here. So you're going to select that FS2. You click on plus, And then what the software is doing, it's now putting all the images where that control point is actually featuring in. It's now giving them to, uh, to you. So what you need to now do is to zoom in to that GCP and then snap off. So what you guys can already see, uh, you know, after flight, it's, it's, this, is, this is not ideal. I mean, after you've flown your area, um, if you're using permanent GCPs, it's worth just visiting these GCPs. Make sure that they are nice and visible. As you can see, the dust they are lying on that GCP. Um, so the thing is, you know, when you go to a st typical typical mine site, you know, just okay, um, take this into consideration. You know, um, so what uh, I'm going to do here is is basically now just snap off in the middle of that GCP, and then you'll see this pixel picker popping up. So I'm going to snap off. If you're not sure if you have actually selected close to the center of the GCP, you can just revisit that previous image before you proceed to the second one. Yes, so I'm happy with that one. And now I can just continue with the second image. All right, so I'm just going to snap off like that. And next one. All right, like that. Okay, this is just to give you guys an idea. I'm not going to do this for all of them, but just for you guys, just to get a, a feel for how to go about. Right, and then snap that guy off, and yeah, that, and, and, and etc. So ultimately, once you've done with this one, uh, you can then come, uh, you know, proceed to the second one. So if you select it there, you can either once again select it in your project explorer or in your plan view. So when you select that guy there, click on plus. It will then be listed there. So if you also just want to see, um, you'll see that under status, it will show you it's enabled. Um, you can now go and you can select either enabled or disable it. You know, if should there be should it should there be a need? But what I also want to show you guys is that, for instance, FSE three. Sometimes it's, well, not sometimes, but it's also a good suggestion to make use of checkpoints. Use some completely independent points that you can now go. So, for instance, I've got a point here, FSW2, and I've got another point there, FSE2. So, I would, um, my suggestion was to then use FSE3 as a checkpoint. So, what you can then do, I've already started with this, but under status, you can now just change this to as a checkpoint. Okay, and then uh, once again continue with the snapping off of this. What's nice about this is that this will also be in your in your overall report, showing you you know what was the different the order residuals on your checkpoints as well. What I didn't mention is after the relative adjustment, it will already start. Um, uh, generating a report after you've done your absolute adjustment, you know, with these control uh, um, um, markings, um, what will it will do? It will then uh, generate a new report 
that's now con showing you exactly what you've done in your in your project um, you know processing your your flight missions right so you will then now proceed and using all your GCPs that's available then after you've done all of that you can now click on next and then you can start focusing on your deliverables. So what you can now do is to either select a specific area by using a boundary. So for instance, if you're not interested, I'm just going to close these station-based views quickly. If you're not interested in the whole project and only a certain section, you can then use a boundary to only generate a, a del deliverable, should it be a point cloud or an author photo of a specific uh, area in that boundary. Your elevation type, digital terrain model, like most of you guys know, that will just be a, 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 a um, terrain surface, okay, that will be without vegetation and buildings, and your digital surface model, um, you can now go and you can select what type of density it is that you want of your data, so for instance, if you select medium, you can then um, specify where the data needs to be stored, and then also uh, you can uh, um, name your, your, your deliverables and then you can now go and you can select what kind of file format would you like for your point cloud data and also for let's say you need an author mosaic as well then what you'll do is you will then select your resolution there's just an indication of high you're looking at about 50 millimeters per pixel so Depending uh, if you select the tie, I mean, obviously it's going to have a, um, an effect on your processing time, but uh, should this be what you need, then you select all of that, and then as, uh, by a press of a button, then it will start and complete the processing part. So once we are done with that whole process, I'm just going to open up the completed project. But that's ultimately the, the, the processing part. So let me just open up the, the project quickly. There we go. Uh, let me just say no here. Yeah. Okay. Getting there. All right, and there we go. Okay, so now I'm plan view. Right, so what you can see now, this is basically your point cloud data that has now been generated. So if I jump over to a 3D view, this is just to give you a feel of, of, of the data set. Okay, and from here on you can now start um, working with your point cloud data. But what I'm going to do, I'll leave that for the second data set, but this is now merely just to show you um, typically how the point cloud data would look like. So jumping back to my plan view, um, also, if you would like to see your your um, your author mosaic image under your imported files, there you can now see there's your TIFF file and there's your LAS file. So, if you would like to switch off your point cloud and have a look at your um, author mosaic, what you can then do is to use the view filter manager, which is very nice and handy. You can basically switch on and switch off what you want to see and 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 what you don't want to see. So. Um, what we can, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to switch off my scans and then I'm going to switch on my georeferenced image and there we go just to give you guys uh, an idea of, 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 of the quality that you can expect to get right so that's basically how the author mosaic looks like alright so that's that's ultimately now what I wanted to show you on, on, on the GCP uh, processing or, or rather uh, processing your flight missions using GCPs in TBC. So next up I'm going to now show you um, quickly just a report of the data set. So let me just open this up here. So this was now the, the report that was generated. So if I start off with the general project information, here you can see the computer that I've used um, to process the data sets. This is basically a very, very um, uh, it's, it's a minimum a minimum spec computer. Um, but just to give you an idea of you know what I've used to process the data, there was 135 images. So you can just see the flight overview. So if you see red um, uh, circles here in the flight overview, 
it's worth uh, investigating that a little bit further. That basically means that there might be something wrong with the block adjustments. There's your tie point extractions. So green and blue are basically good. Uh, orange is okay. I mean, we are expecting because of the um, not enough overlap on the edges. That's why we're getting those red uh, tie point dots there. So what I want to go down, so you can see it's quite a detailed report covering all um, a, a number of things. But what I want to show you guys is just the, the residuals. Uh, that's just the block adjustments. Let me just go down. Right, so there we go. There's your ground control points that was now used. There's just the overall, um, you know, the, the, root mean, the root mean squared error that you that was obtained and also the confidence level. And then lastly was those checkpoints that I've used. So I've used two of these points and those were the residuals that I got, the independent checks that I, that I did. Right, but everything is now in, this, in, 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 in the report. Okay, so I just want to close this off and then open up my second data set, data set number two. Uh, do you want to say, uh, no, that's fine. Let me just open up this project. Right, for the second project, this is, this is where um, I'm just going to show you guys the PPK workflow where you would use a, a, a permanent base station data set that was now logging static data to then correct the photo station positions of your flight mission. So I just want to switch off the station-based views quickly. So what you guys can see here, you'll see that it's very, very nice in a straight line, this data set. That was because it was captured in RTK um, mode using the DRTK2 base station. But I'm, using, I'm going to use this data set just for the PPK process as well. Um, so ultimately, the next step would be, um, once again, remember saving your project, but you'll start with a photogrammetry module again. And then what you'll do is again import your data. So you'll once again click on import DJI data and then just specify where the data was stored. It was only one flight mission, so we don't have to merge the flights in again. What you guys can see here is the Trimble Access job file that was imported into the project. And that was uh, once again just a matter of dragging and dropping the, um, the, the, the Trimble Access job file in. And that's also the one um, uh, uh, nice thing about uh, Trimble Business Center is that you can now just plug in all your different data um, uh, data sets into uh, your project. So if you've got total station data, if you have um, a level data, whatever the case might be, drone data, terrestrial scanning data, everything can now just basically plug into Trimble Business Center. Right. So after having said all of that, is um, so I've imported it. I'm mentioning it again. Importing the Trimble Access job files, we've basically set up on this uh, this point there, and we've measured in the checkpoints on on at, at the stockyard. And then um, what I've also done was um, at point number B, we've logged static data there. So we've set up a Trimble R8S receiver there to log static data and that data was then used to correct the photo station positions. So let me take you through the process. Right, the most important part is when you import your T02 file, that's basically the native file format for um, the, 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 you know, for Trimble uh, static data files, when you import that into TBC, you need to make sure that that's got a control quality to actually be able to process your baselines. So after you've imported all your data sets, now you can start in, in processing your baselines. Let's say you did not use your own Trimble base station and you, you can actually use the TrickNet stations as well. And I'm just going to quickly just give you guys a, a, a um, overview on that. So if you click on Internet Download in TBC, you'll see that I've already um, created a, the TrickNet stations. Ladysmith is actually the closest, but it was uh, offline on that day. So if you select Great Town and you click on Automatic, it will then go onto the, um, the TrickNet uh, um, uh, website and actually look for the data files um, covering that period. So 
once all of this is done you can then import the data and then you will also be able to process your data what you also just need to take into consideration when you do this internet download and using the for instance the great town base station you need to just change the coordinate so that it actually now um, uh, plugs into the South African coordinate system right so that's the uh, trick nets um, you know when using your the, 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 um, the trick net stations but what I'm going to do now is just to process my baselines using the um, my, uh, you know my Trimble base station so clicking on that selecting you'll see that those question marks this is what you can expect to see so don't worry too much when you see this what you do need to take into consideration is you'll see that that report is basically now grayed out by clicking on that little arrow there, clicking on report, it will then open up a, a report for you. I'm just going to open this up. Sorry, let me just move it that side. So six of the positions um, failed to process. If you open that up, here you can see, you know, the estimated accuracies was between 0 to 5 centimeters. It was most of the points or the photo station positions were within that range. But that was mainly due to the fact that it was flown in RTK mode. All right. So there, going down, this is basically just all of your tracking summaries of, of the different satellites. But everything is then in this report. Right. Once you're done with this, you can click on Save. And that's basically your PPK processing completed. Next up would now be to adjust your photo stations once again. So you can then go again, uh, do your relative adjustment. Once that is completed, you can then jump again to the, the advanced UAS. And then should you want to use your GCPs to also still uh, do some um, absolute uh, adjustments, you can do that. Or you can use those points as checkpoints which I would really recommend you guys to do so if you select that position there click on plus it will then list the amount of images so these checkpoints were not really ideal it's very hard to actually pinpoint exactly where the center is so this is not really ideal so when you select the image zoom in once again and then you can now snap off it will open up with the uh, um, with the with the pixel picker when you snap that off you can then now do it for all the images also just a, a suggestion you know when um, as I've mentioned this is not really ideal this 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 GCP but it's also good to write just you know spray paint the number of the GCP there so that you know exactly where, where, which one is where so that it links up with uh, what you've got on your your, your coordinate file Right, so next one, I'm just going to snap off here again, um, just to give you guys a feel for that. But ultimately, you'll now go through all of that. Just remember to change that to, if you want to use that as checkpoints, just to select checkpoints. And then, once again, move over to the deliverable side of things, where you would now just specify exactly what you want to generate. So, for instance, once again, your point cloud density and your auto mosaic or your uh, raster DSM that you want to generate, you can do this here. Right, so that basically concludes once again the PPK processing side of things. Now let me just open up the. There we go. Let me just open up the completed project. And then what I'm going to do is then just show you how would you go about. Um, computing volumes um, and actually start working with the point cloud data. Right, so this is my 3D view showing you all the you know the point cloud data that was now generated. So once again using your view filter manager you can now switch on switch off what you would like to see. When you import your point cloud data, everything under your point cloud regions, normally what you'll see there, there will be a default region and there will be a never classified region. So when you haven't, when you just start off with your project, all the points will be in the never, cl never classified project um, uh, region, my apologies. 
So you'll see that there's a ground and high vegetation. This is a quick algorithm inside TBC to quickly classify your point cloud data. Now this is quite handy. So for instance, um, if the objective was to calculate volumes, this is a good um, option to use to quickly just get all the ground points. So what you do, you select the region and then you do, what you do is you select point clouds, you go to extract classified point regions and then from here on you basically decide what it is that you want to create. So for instance, if you're only interested in the buildings, ground and high vegetation, you can switch the rest off and um, uh, extract, click on extract and then ultimately you'll get these regions. So just to show you guys, um, if I switch off toggle visibility, switch off my ground, right, this is typically what you can expect to see, and then high vegetation is there, toggle visibility, and then there's my buildings. Right, so I'm going to switch off buildings now, and then once again work with my, my ground points, which is ultimately looking like this. Right, so next up is um, also if you want to see the different uh, colors, the region colors. So if you select a, a region color, this is just merely just for interest sake that I'm showing you guys this. If you switch on your high vegetation and your buildings, uh, toggle visibility, what's nice about this, it will give you an idea of exactly, you know, um, where your point clouds are. All right, but ultimately you've got the option then to now go back to true color should it be necessary. Right, so I'm going to switch off the buildings again and high vegetation and now focus on computing the volumes. So for instance, um, normally on a stockyard, um, a stockyard a stockpile yard like this, um, there will be a base already defined. So if you have the base points, you can then import them, create a surface, and then ultimately also create a surface um, of the stockpiles. But I'm just going to give you guys so two scenarios. So typically, let's say um, you are doing a month in volumes um, as a contractor or working for the mine you would then have a dedicated base to which you would now compare the stockpiles to. So for instance, um, so in that scenario, I will go to quickly just open up my uh, let us see it's PPK. Oops, let me just quickly open it up. Sorry, my apologies, just be with me. Uh, drones Phantom 40k data, mining. Right, so what I will do, I'll take my base file. I'll import this into TBC. Okay, I'm not going to use control quality, it's just going to be unknown points. So I'm going to import this. Right, to look like this. For now, I'm just going to switch off my ground. Right, like this. And um, like I said, sometimes it's just easier to use the view filter manager to just quickly scroll down to your point cloud region, switch this off. And now, what I want to see is my points. So there's a point that, that I need to switch on, but now it will also show my photo station uh, positions. So what I would like to do is to, then to put my base points on a different layer. So I can now quickly go to my points, select them, quickly go down, select that, right click properties, and then I can just put this in a different layer under base. Okay. So when you import points, it will already put it by default on the points layer. Okay. So when you've got that, I can now go once again to my view filter manager, switch those points off that I don't want to see. Oops, sorry, not like that. Um, it's under points. There we go. Right. So there's my base points. You'll see that there's my RTK data that I can also switch off. But ultimately, I would like to use these points, quickly create a surface. Oops. And I'll go, I'm going to use the surface then for the volume calculation. So then just call it a base as well. Then you can put it under original, put it under, make, give it a color, green, click on OK. 
and then when I go to plan view I can then use um, you'll see that there's some triangles that's extrapolating here and if you switch on your georeferenced image you can already see that there's a breach section, section there so I don't want it to extrapolate so I can then switch this off go back to 3d view select trim surface edge and then I can quickly delete those triangles there right like that whoops from outside inwards there we go happy days and then close right so now after I've done this there's also some functionality within the surfaces so if you go to surfaces the way that you actually view the data so you can now go under base under the base surface it's just say by shading I just want to say uh, by surface color and then also by surface color there we go and then in the 3d view there's my surface right so next up is to then let me just minimize my points uh, select ground toggle visibility and then what I'm going to do now might find it a little bit hard there I can change the transparency of the of the surface but what I'm going to do just for the sake of saving time I'm just going to say toggle visibility there and then what I'm going to do now is to select the the, 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 the stockpile roughly and then what I'm going to do then I'll do a surface to surface um, uh, volume calculation so what I'm going to do now is to just go about selecting this point cloud here I'm just going to do it roughly guys Right, like this, like this, 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 this. Okay, select it like that. Right, there's that. I can then, under my points, I can actually just switch those points off. But um, let me quickly do that. just under view filter manager let me just switch off these points because I don't want them part of the of the um, right of the surface of the stockpile so what I'm going to do now is to surfaces create surface just call it stock one okay that is my stockpile and then uh, client and then fly and then what I'm going to do then is to do a surface to surface volume calculation so after doing that it's now been applied so now if I click on under surfaces earthwork report just see what's cooking it's probably just thinking about it come on Yeah, Gustav, while you're waiting for it to just generate that surface, I think the nice thing, uh, as you guys can see on Gustav's screen there, is you can create multiple surfaces in DBC and then yeah. obviously add a measured date and time as well, which is uh, very nice for guys that want to keep track of the progress of a stockpile being worked on. You can actually generate that specific surface on a specific time and date and then compare it uh, a few months down the line or go back uh, when we need a few months down the line and see exactly when that stockpile was measured and the volume was calculated right so yeah thanks for that Albert okay so ultimately I'm just waiting for it just to do it um, to just complete this process in creating the surface but then next up would be to do a surface to surface volume calculation we need to specify what is the um, the initial or the let's rather say the base um, uh, surface and what's the final surface which would be the stockpile that I've created here and then calculate the volume so anytime now While we're waiting there, Gustav. Uh, just an indication, some of the, the guys wanted to know what was the processing time for the specific project? Uh, if you take it from when you started uh, creating all the deliverables and then getting an end product. 
It was approximately, it was about two hours, Albert, on, 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 on this specific computer. 16 gig okay. RAM, um, I think it's got a 4, four, four gig um, graphics card. So yeah, it, it's not highly spec'd, but yeah, it was approximately two hours. And that was at the highest setting for the author photo and the, the point cloud. Author photo, I think the author photo was on a medium uh, resolution. The point cloud um, was on high. Okay. Yeah. Let's go back. To right. Albert. Um, Not a problem. Uh, I'll wait for that. Uh, just uh, a few questions about the hardware spec as well. So just to let you guys know. If you're looking at uh, hardware specifications, uh, recommended at the moment, um, if you look at the enhancement that's been made, uh, we're talking about uh, with minimum about 32 gigs of RAM is what the minimum requirement is. Recommended at the moment is 64 gigs of RAM. Uh, four terabytes and more on the SSD drive would be preferable. And then uh, GPU um, would also be preferable at four, a 4 gig graphics card does enhance uh, the processing as well and the speed of what you can view your information. So just for the guys, uh, obviously the, the quicker process you have, iCore 7, uh, that will obviously also enhance and help with the processing speed uh, on your system. All right, just bear with me guys. My apologies for this. It's been a long day. Right. Okay. So let's get it sorted. So yeah, that's the data set number two. Once again, I'm just going to jump right into it. Continue where we left off. I just have to quickly just create those surfaces again. But I think what I'm going to do, I'll just do a normal stockpile measurement. Then I don't have to actually create those uh, base surface again. Right, so what I'm going to do, let me just switch on. Oh, sorry, this is the, it should be the other one. My apologies for that. Uh, yes. Okay, there we go. So what we can do is now once again, I'm just going to snap this off. Okay, let's unselect that, that vector, and then quickly create the surfaces. And I just want to touch on this, so once again I'm just going to uh, create this, just call it new surface, that's fine, and then just uh, stockpile, let's make it green, and then say OK. Right. Just creating that surface quickly. And then once this is done, I can then click on my earthwork report again. So for instance, if you just needed to calculate the volume here, it will then and you've accurately snapped the coordinate off. You can then use CAD lines as well to define your stockpile. Um, so if you click on earthwork report. So I'm just waiting for it to open up. Right, there we go. 
Looks yes, like there we go. Up your PC as well. Earth, Earthwork, <laughs> Earth, Earthwork reports that, that that is what I wanted to show you guys. So there's the stockpile depression option. There's that surface to surface. That's the one that I wanted to show you guys. It's just basically if you use that um, that base and compare it to this surface, um, then you can then just define it accordingly. So you'll select which surface to which surface you want to compute the volume. But for now, I'm just going to use stockpile there, um, and then basically select select OK. It's now just quickly computing and then it will give you a earthwork report. Just waiting for it to quickly generate. But you've got some CAD functionality also that you can now go and you can define if it's if it's if it's needed, you can actually then snap off on the toe points of, of the stockpile using the 3D view. Um, and uh, Basically, then define what where, where the toe points of the of the um, of the stockpile is. Just a note on that, Gustav, as you mentioned there. So, what you can also do is once you've defined the toe line with a CAD line, you can actually just select that CAD line and create a surface from that CAD line to create your base right. surface. And then, once you obviously calculated this. Uh, volume or the surface that Gustav has now done, that will be your comparison between your your initial and your new surface as well. So there's another way of quickly doing that. Perfect. All right. So while it's just quickly computing there. Um, next up, what I would like to show, I mean, a lot of the time you might want to share your data with uh, with your clients just to um, you know uh, give them a little bit of a, of an appetite for your data so there's a web browser viewer that you can now share your data with your clients um, so in Trimble Business Center there's Trimble Clarity so you can publish your project and then send the link off to your client and he can actually also then appreciate the data um, and also make some measurements and some basic functions that you can do. But ultimately, if you would like to share that data with your client, then Trimble Clarity is the way to do that. All right, so I'm just waiting for this guy. This is typical live demonstration. Um, Not a problem. Gustav, I think what I'll do is let me quickly see if I can show the guys that two small videos about the auto extraction. Uh, anybody interested in that? I'll quickly do that. So let me quickly share my screen. Don't mind. And we'll see if that in the background finishes off. Uh, let's quickly get that stuff and let's hope this video actually wants to work with us. Uh, see where I have it now. Uh, let's rather do it this way. I'll just share that big screen on that side. Let's just move this across. There we go, uh, share this, there we go, so I'll just quickly show this, so just let me know, can you see that Gustav? Yes, I can see that Albert. Okay, let's see what happens when I play this, so this is just the, the way that you will do the auto extraction for power lines, as you can see over there, I'll just run this video and let's hope it plays. So there you can see, you will pick the two holes that you want to do the auto extraction between, and then you select the actual lines that you would like to do. And as I said, you can choose multiple ones and then just go to the extract. And as you can see, hopefully it doesn't buffer too much. It auto extracts the line running up to where you selected the pole you want to go to. Once it's done, you'll see it automatically jump to the other side and start extracting that for you, creating a CAD line for you uh, according to that one when it's done you'll see it will jump to the second line that you chose that you want to be auto extracted there. All right. Albert, that video yeah. coming all right through on your side, Gustav? Yeah, all good, Albert. Um, my apologies. I'm just, yeah, it seems like it's hanging here on my end. Um, I think while we wait, can we maybe just attend to some of the questions here? I see there's, um, I'm just going to, start with the one that I'm seeing here currently it's with uh, from Sakwa about a linear project um, so Sakwa what's in, in DJI pilot there's actually options where you can choose linear 
project. So for instance, in a typical road scenario that you have there, you basically define the center line of, 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 the, of the area and then from there on how wide you want to fly. So there is, in DJI Pilot, there's a specific function for linear flights. Um, then, I'm just... Um, Next yes. one, I'll just quickly show you guys the one for the auto extract from curb and gutter functionality. Let me just quickly share that one. Uh, did I lose it now? Where did it go? One second. There we go. Oop, let's just go back. And there we go. So this is where you can see how it will do an auto extraction of a curb and gutter. Uh, again, you define the basic points of what you would like to get extracted arrow points in the direction of what you will do the auto extraction from and when you start it off uh, you will see it now calculates it and then auto extracts that going forward according to what you picked okay so yeah the two auto extracting functions that you have uh, in TBC, I know you can also do that for trees as well like stuff where you can actually uh, click yes. on trees and it will uh, calculate the dimension of a tree as well as the height and the spread of the tree as well. So there is that auto extraction That's functionality right. as well. I uh, just wanted to show that specific two ones at the moment for that kind of data. Um, okay. 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 Right. I'm just restarting this project here. Um, my apologies for that. Um, I see there's another question from Awiti with regards to um, yeah, uh, drone imagery software crashing midway. Awiti, it's un um, so it doesn't make a back up as well depending on where you are with your project but um, yeah um, the, the, the chance are pretty good that should it crash that yeah that unfortunately it's not going to save and continue where it left off from my experience um, okay what I wanted to show you guys quickly um, is just I'm just going to share my screen again Albert yeah no problem quickly back to TBC um, as I was mentioning about um, sharing the data with your clients, so ultimately if you would like to now share this point cloud, what you will do is under point clouds, you will then use your Trimble Clarity, you'll publish it first, and then if you want to view the data, so it will publish, it will also inf inform you in TBC that it is um, that it has been successfully published so what you will see is typically something like this so this is now you as the owner you signing into your your Trimble Clarity account right so it will show you where your project data is so that's my two projects there I'm gonna go to this one And what you can do here now is you can now under your settings, I'm just going to switch on my terrain model and my um, satellite imagery, save it. Alright, so there's my there's my data set. Now you can't really see with this um, uh, with, with, with the uh, terrain model. So what we can do is just once again just to switch it off to visualize the data better. So I'm going to switch that off, save it. And now your client will be able to actually see the data. Right. Then also, so once again, this is now you visualizing your data. If you would like to now share it with your client, you can now go by selecting um, this, this, this uh, icon there. Under data management, you can select this. And then you can use the share tab. Type in an email address or copy the link. So if you select the email option, type in the email, share it, your client will get it and then he can view the project. As I've mentioned, he will be able to then go and do some, some measurements. Um, I can quickly just show you guys how that's done. So under your tools, there's some measurements. There was an actual previous measurement that I've made. If they want to see, for instance, you know, what's the roof uh, length. Um, you can then do it if they want to see from different, let me just see, for instance, if they want to know what's the width of the, of the road, whatever the case might be. And then also you can now, of course, 
pivot around it if they want to see what's the oh, guys I'm just showing you an example there if you want to see what's the width of the road they will be able to calculate that but yeah you can it's a very nice way for the client to also interact with the data and get a little bit of a progress report um, yeah um, with regards to the volumes um, I don't know if uh, Albert is there enough time to maybe just quickly do one and show the report maybe yeah, you can quickly, Let's try quickly one go more for it. See if you can do it. One more time. One more yeah. time. Last time. See if that memory so, works. So I'm just going to just quickly select this guy here. Double click on that. Select it. Then create surface. I'm just going to call it new surface in any case. Green. All right. Okay. Create the surface. Right, earthwork report, then stockpile depression, right, and then click OK. And then ultimately your report would look like this, and you can save it in a PDF file format. Okay, it's just quickly computing. Albert, is there any other questions while we wait for it to uh, just, compute? Uh conversion between DJI and Sensefly's imagery formats uh, depends on what kind of what kind of format you're referring to there um, usually it's either ECW or a compressed TIFF format that you get um, we just have to get a bit more clarity on what is required there and then there's one about PPK post processing is the uh, base control points held constant and the image adjusted with respect to it if that's the case why aren't there baselines from the control point to the images uh, yeah you you do do not see that yeah there is uh, actual yeah. lines between the I've flights and and the stuff it's just been turned off so good stuff 100 percent yeah I can quickly maybe just show that but there's definitely PPK vectors it's finalizing I've that. just okay. I've just switched off all the, uh, the 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 flight the flight lines and all those things and also the PPK data yes all right um, so Franco just the, the the actual deliverable no it's not the actual deliverable that you're sharing it's just a view a visualization of it in clarity so it's not the actual LAS it, the LAS file is actually uploaded into clarity uh, I don't think the client can download it on that side Gustav am I correct when it comes to clarity I think it's just visualizing the actual LAS file it's you can't download 100%. It. it's it's only visualizing yes yeah so it is uploading an actual LAS file but the client is just using it to visualize it on his side. He won't be able to download the actual last file. Uh, but we can just double check on that to make sure. All right. Okay. So there's all the the raw data of the images. I've just switched so, um, some of them on. But yeah, ultimately there's yeah your photo stations and stuff. If you switch the... on your photogrammetric stuff, you'll even see a bit more. So uh, okay, you'll just switch everything switch on there on as well. Yeah. And the guys will see the stuff that they were asking about. Right. Any other uh, questions, Albert? Uh, it looks like that's it for now, Gustav. Just unshare your screen there for me. Oh, you don't want to see yourself. No, it's fine. Okay, then I'll just quickly share the last bit from our side. Uh, so we went through the questions. Uh, if there's any others, uh, there was a link posted in the comments where you guys can actually post your questions if there's anything else you would like to know. Please use that link. Uh, it's a bit further up in the chat. You will find it there. Um, lastly, just like to mention Optron's help desk. So guys, if you have any technical or queries in the field that you would like to be resolved on, on any of our equipment that you've purchased, please take note of the, the telephone numbers, uh, the international WhatsApp we have as well. So if you just want to pop us a WhatsApp and the email address, uh, there's always uh, guys available Mondays to Fridays from 8 to 4.30 in the afternoons. They will be able to assist you with any of your technical queries and requests that you have. So please use them. They're knowledgeable and they can definitely help you out with any of your problems in the field or in the office uh, pertaining to any of the equipment and software that we sell. Just if you want to follow us on social media, um, we have all the platforms available for you. So there's LinkedIn, Facebook, uh, we're on Instagram. There's a lot of YouTube videos and stuff as well that you can track. And then our actual website as well, where all the latest information pertaining to what we offer 
and what you can find will be available there. If that's it then for my side, if that's nothing more from your side, Gustav, I think we can call it a wrap. Perfect. Thank you, Albert. Thanks, everybody Thank that you guys. joined us. And hope you enjoyed the session. If there's any other questions, the link was just posted again in the chat. Please add your questions. Uh, we will definitely assist with that. Um, and then uh, see you guys for the next webinar, which will be hopefully in a few weeks' time. Thank you so much, Gustav. Thanks, Albert. Thanks, guys. Yes, everyone. Bye-bye.